very good afternoon everyone here present it's good to see such large number of participants i take uh, delight in welcoming our audience here to our web webinar series of resurgent india limited thank you for taking out time and to be here with us today we have two very seasoned real estate professional with us and with them we will try to cover all aspects of real estate from commercial residential co-living all types of asset classes which are here with us we have mr kalpesh mehta who is the founder of trebika developers and co-founder hosu he pioneered the concept of branded development in india by introducing that trump brand to the local market he has very strong background in private equity also in the domestic and the international real estate development studied in wharton worked with famous fund houses i welcome kalpesh bhai to this show thank you so so much kalpesh bhai for thank this thank you for having me thanks kalpesh also we have one more very prominent industry leader with us mr parvesh uh, bhai ceo of nucleus office park an outstanding leader with uh, kaiser has an unimitable qualities believe me friends he is an all rounder whether it is strategy leadership corporate finance stakeholder management team building leadership project management capital raising structuring kalpesh mane this kaiser uh, bhai has seen it all done it all kaiser bhai welcome kaiser bhai to sit to this so i i i hope that uh, and th thank you for making it in time kaiser bhai thank you jyoti glad to I, be here and 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 i think that your video was not was man it is not working i suppose so we have to all the audience need to be aware with that guys gather by for that i i am glad to be here jyoti thank, thank you for you. the kind introduction thank you okay. friends i was looking forward for this session i assure you all present here that we'll have an exciting one hour of discussion uh, one say one hour with us today we'll try to take you through all aspects of real estate uh, from two new school of leaders who sees real estate from a different angle who brings very different thought process and who are absolutely trying to revolutionize the real estate industry in the way that they can today's topic seems to be very very touchy one commercial tenants are not paying migrant laborers laborers are chale gaye institution funding drying up insolvency rera gst kalpesh bhai don't you think that we already had enough on the platter and now this covid by kalpesh bhai from here where kalpesh bhai <laughs> so you know i used to uh, i i used to think you know why are we why is the real estate sector bearing the brunt of, of, of it all <laughs> now i feel that like us as a generation globally we've been chosen for this once in a 100 year calamity correct um uh, yeah it's uh, you know it's it's a tough one how how would you like to do this mane i i suppose that you can have your initial remarks right now and there 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 after there are a lot of question answers which are coming up we'll take one by one we'll take your opinion on everything you see so, so you mane you can just have from here where we'll just have some initial remarks of yours and sure. and then we'll take it up from there so i'll keep it short to sort of 3 to 5 minutes um, correct correct uh, so you know uh guys the 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 biggest thing i think that we're all internalizing uh over the last few weeks is that this is not over anytime soon um uh you know there there are going to be second and and third waves of this you know until there's a vaccine or a cure we're in this for anywhere from 12 to to 18 months and depending on what call various governments take um we're going to see we're going to see very different outcomes right so just to give you an example we, when we locked down we were at 500 cases in india mm. we're at 20000 now you know unless the lockdown lasts much 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 longer i don't think we're going to open up at under 500 right so you're going to open up with a lot more cases than when you lock down mm. um you know i'm in bombay and they're predicting the peak for bombay is not going to hit till uh, you know late june early july with you know with with you know 10x the number of you know sorry 100x the number of cases we have right now so uh we don't know what 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 the governments are going to do um it, so how the economy and how the sector pans out is purely a function of how the disease progresses and and what decisions the government take right so when you do scenario planning uh mm -hmm. it is all a function of, and then when we do scenario planning the range of possible outcomes are so wide um and the only variables that move that are you know how long is the lockdown going to last Mm. when are we going to open up and and what's going to open you know what's going what's going to happen when we open so if we open in may or june in mumbai we know the disease is going to be spreading you know pretty rapidly uh, because we've not brought it down to zero uh, you can't open up a city like bombay or delhi without opening up public transport um, so high density cities with public transport 
uh, you're going to have these cases sort of spread. Um, and I think developing countries are going to have to take a call that it's just not going to be, you know, economically viable to keep the country locked down for many more months. And unfortunately, I think there are some, you know, tough calls that will have to be taken. Um, so, you know, whether the lockdown lasts a very, very long time or we open up quickly and we sort of, you know, see, you know, people still getting sick, th there is going to be an uncertain, you know, uncertainty around us for, for a long, long time to come, you know, whether the lockdown lasts or not. The disease itself is not going away, um, you know, any, anytime soon. So I think, uh, and, and the only, I'm, I'm not an epidemiologist, but the only reason I mentioned all of it is because this has a di direct bearing on, on the decisions we take with, with regards to our business. And, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a young people, you know, people who are much, much older than me, you know, mm -hmm. people who've been in the business 50 years, you know, they haven't seen a time like this in their entire careers. So even you know, decision making for anyone right now is, is, is impossibly hard. And, and, but you must, right? Uh, one, because we're human beings and we like to be in control and we like to, and, you know, and the mind likes to plan. And, to, you know, all I would say is I, I see too many people planning for, you know, a narrow range of outcomes. Um, it's, it's, it's not going to be, I think the range of outcomes that one needs to plan for are, are, are much, much wider and probably more on the downside. Um, so, you know, if you, if you were planning zero revenue or, 20 30 percent revenue for for three months you know see what happens to your model Correct. you know if it lasts longer than that uh you know you you have you you know you have to plan for that um and then that's what we're doing but you know my my outlook on i, I don't want to be all doom and gloom um you know this is this is unprecedented this is like a you know this is like a world war but it's a world war that's going to last you know six months 12 months not five or six years Perfect. um and and there is going to be light at the end of the tunnel the only comparison we have to something like this is the sort of 1918 pandemic where the loss of life was, was, was a lot higher. But if you looked at, um, you know, most countries, the economies bounce back pretty quickly, um, you know, after, after that. So I think right now, we, we, you know, we have sort of a global coordinated effort by the central banks, you know, the RBI has been sort of a bit behind than most of them. And, and hopefully the economy doesn't completely go down in the dumps and hopefully it doesn't take us three, four years to sort of come out of it. But I think, uh, uh, you know, as, as a sector, I think we all need to get together and, and lobby, you know, with the government on, on what are the three or four things that we want, right? Um, and, and, but keep in mind that every other sector is doing the same. Everybody is it, right? It's not just home builders and office developers. It, it is manufacturing guys. It is, you know, obviously hospitality. It's the SME. Everybody is it. And, Everybody is, is looking to the government. The government, their hands are, you know, are tied, uh, but they, they have to act and we have to sort of lobby. Um, do I think, um, uh, you know, life will have to sort of continue in some way, shape or form, you know, while, while we're locked down and, and a lot of innovative solutions will be, will be required, right? There won't be too many of us standing at the end of it. So, you know, forget, forget competition right now. This is the time to collaborate and, and see how we can help each other in, 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 in surviving, right? Whether it is, you know, figuring out, you know, what are going to be, uh, uh, how are we going to manage labor on our, on our sites uh, and, and how are we going to bring them back to, you know, working with banks for innovative solutions on, on home financing. These are all creative things that we as an industry will need to sort of come up with uh to to sort of to, to be able to go through through um this um uh, you know and, and like i said this is not you know this is not a five year sort of you know uh you know bad plate sort of a maybe a six to twelve month thing and and uh Jyoti, as you'd said we were right. you know, residential real estate was already down <laughs> in the dump so there's not much more you can you know that you can plan you know there's not much more lower to go um, you already had back to the wall so what happens at the what, at the end of this, however long that period is, if you think it's three months or six months or twelve months, whatever that is, what waits for those who can make it to the other side of it is, you know, a period of three to four years where people just have not been buying homes. Um, you have, uh, you know, you'll have, you know, land prices are going to come down. You'll have, you know, product pricing that's going to be, you know, quite attractive, and not a lot of 
supply and, and a lot of, lot of developers left. So, um, you know, when you say when everything is sort of brought down, then you can only go up. Um, so I think, I think the goal is to just sort of make it to the, to the other side and then, then it looks good. Fantastic. So I, I think what, what I could gather that it is a short term phenomenon culprits by, I suppose that the, that the, so something very good is waiting for us uh, right now, but we need to. Six to twelve months is I'm not sure. Six to whatever whatever is that time between say six to twelve months, we need to be standing there. Correct. Correct. So, Kaiser, by what's your opinion thought on to the commercial real estate market? Because I see that there are uh, before even you arrive to the dials and before even you start speaking, there are approximately around uh, twenty questions which are there approximately, which is around the commercial real estate pricing, retail real estate. But I will definitely yeah. come back to you the questions later. But sure. uh, but what is your initial remark, uh, Kajar? Yeah. Kajar, we, so, can't so, so the, we can't see you, Kajar. Hey, hey, hey Kalpesh, sorry for, for just making <laughs> up with the audio today. But no let me, uh, you know, so... We, so you, let me... It's a double yes, no, Kajar. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> so, so let me just start introducing what is Nucleus Office Park and what we do. Correct, absolutely. Just, 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 just build on from where Kalpesh left. Uh, so Correct. Nucleus Office Park uh, is basically the operating platform for uh, everything which Blackstone owns 100% in the country. So all the assets which Blackstone owns other than a partner, uh, everything which is uh, owned singularly by Blackstone on its fund. Uh, Nucleus Office Park is the operating platform. So, uh, you know, we, we run uh, a sort of footprint of roughly about 11 million square feet, uh, you know, and obviously it started to grow as we go along. Uh, I do see a lot of questions on, on what our strategy going, you know, going forward would be, yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how things are and so on and so forth. And I'll briefly <laughs> try and answer that. Uh, more yeah. importantly, there was also a huge earnings call which 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 happened mm. yesterday and i'm sure it is there on cnbc for a lot uh, for a lot of us to watch out for and so on but just building on on, on what kalpesh mentioned and i i echo the similar sentiment right uh, it's very easy easy for us to typically say that you know it's all over and so on but some hard real you know some facts around the fact that why i or you know why i think that we are firmly poised to be the recipient or when everything is over or probably on the other side uh, Traditionally, uh, roughly about $16 billion uh, in, in about $8 billion in equity and $8 billion in, in debt fund went out of this country to FII rule between February and March. Uh, and obviously, yes. that is all risk adjusted and all of that. Yes. Right? Uh, you know, when all of this over, now obviously it is debatable whether if you look at it in six months time or nine months time, I'm, I'm really looking at an 18 months to a 24 months sort of period. This this money will have will find its way to come back to emerging markets because this money genuinely belongs to the emerging market. Right? If you look at it from that perspective, one way or the other, this money and in the emerging market, you pretty much have India as one of the greatest exponent or beneficiary of such money. Right? That's one hard fact. The other fact is that we're talking about you know whole balance of payments and so on. Looking mm -hmm. at where the crude stands, you still have a positive balance of payment of at least forty billion dollars, thirty-five to forty billion dollars. Uh, and that's, that's, that's yeah. uh, again, yeah, and that's that, that just puts puts the whole Indian map into a significant sort of uh, space, you know, just yeah. just orbiting from there, coming back to the commercial real estate uh, story. Uh, a lot, lot times, and many of us, we always say that commercial real estate is, is kind of insulated from such shocks and so on and so forth. Uh, perhaps it is, uh, but but in this time, it's not really the case. Uh, hmm. Commercial real estate is as 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 badly losing uh, as perhaps uh, a probably retail is or, or a hotel is. Now, the only exp expectation and the only silver lining in the cloud is that in all cases, historically, every time there has been a depression, starting from a global financial crisis to an agricultural crisis to a demonetization to a 2008, every time if you look at it, every time the recovery has been a V-shaped recovery, before the recovery, everybody is debated whether it's going to be a plateau out or U-shaped and so on. But historical records suggest that it, it has been a V-shaped recovery. And at the end of the V, commercial real estate has pretty much been a gainer because that really uh, indicates the sentiment of the economy. Absorption talks about how the economy is doing, how the machinery is working and so on. Uh, in the given you know, scheme of things, uh, the way we, you know, at, least, at least we look at it, the fact that you know, this is this is a cyclical depression. Uh, fundamentally, there is no structural change in the in the in, in the market. 
while we i why i completely understand that the occupiers and the tenants will have a different look and feel and a different set of expectations right but a lot is for example being spoken about work from home in india now now for something like that to happen it will need structural change in the economy right in 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 our social you know in our social fabric with the way we are you know, you know perhaps 10% of the companies would may go back to a work from home sort of a concept but the 90% of the people will have to come back to offices right? correct uh, and, and and hence and hence we are sort of looking at it that you know commercial real estate will outshine sooner than later now now obviously to kalpesh's point it is extremely important that who will have the long range plan and scenario planning to weather that period of 6 months 9 months 8 18 months 24 months the okay. longer you have that period and the capability to weather this out the greater chances you will have to stand tall at the end of all of this right okay. uh, from where i speak uh, you know fortunately we are very firmly poised in terms of weathering this storm for as long as it takes uh, mm-hmm. you know largely largely perspective from a perspective that you know there is a meaningful scale to everything which we are talking about and because of that scale uh, you know you are you are able to negotiate you are able to bargain and you are able to give solutions which is more comprehensive and that's one of the reasons why we believe that irrespective of anything you know for example just to give you another statistics uh, mm-hmm. in 2008 office mm-hmm. absor- absorption was about 33 million square feet. uh mm-hmm. you know you know just before 2008 after the gfc it went down to about 22 million square feet then the next year immediately in 2009 and end of 2009 early 2010 it went back to 32 million square feet right so office office absorption and office demand is like a perennial thing it it continues to see through see, see through the weather what we will see eventually now is that a lot of people as again kulpe said that you know a lot of companies will be run by the cfos now and not the human resources right and that's largely because of the fact that everybody will be looking at cost and looking at cost through a microscope and that's one of the reasons why you know things like occupancy cost will be a huge huge thing in everybody's mind and that's one of the reasons why you know landlords such as ourselves or or others will have to come back and be be more understanding of what really occupiers need if you choose to have a reckless attitude towards your occupiers you lose the game but if you try and understand people's problem and if you walk that mile there will be a solution inside so that's 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 really the house view and that's really uh, you know uh, my two cents on this uh, you know jyoti before we I'm, move on to the other part of the question i would definitely kazar matlab i am absolutely your bang on on that kalpesh just to bring uh, your uh, trump brand and also your premier housing experience uh, onto the table to start with because that's where i suppose it's going to be the biggest bunt or uh, how do you see the premium housing race man a premium residential market going forward from here look i i i think the uh, the the premium and the luxury markets are where mm-hmm. uh, you know things are a bit more discretionary um and it's heavily heavily sentiment driven so you know given that sentiment is going to be negative for a while and discretionary spending is 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 going to be curtailed uh, i think premium have is going to have you know have a challenge until until things turn around um and and you know there's there's no sort of there's no so sugar coating right the price it's, it's going to be a tough is going to happen uh, in the into the uh, premium residential market uh, uh soon because as you seen that the different scenario need to be built up whether it is 3 months may not be so much but with 6 months 12 months 18 months in case if the problem prolong little further so sure, sure. uh, uh, i i think i think the initial price corrections will come from you know developers who sort of you know need it you know need it immediate the, cash the look the, the biggest the the biggest issue with 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 price uh, corrections is well, there's actually two issues right one is what do you do with customers who already bought um Mm-hmm. uh and and the second is you know a, a price correction normally does not get you velocity um it's really a change in sentiment that's going to you know that's going to get the 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 sales back if you correct prices price corrections will happen they'll be sort of one off though um uh you know sit on the table you know get a deal done etc but i'm not sure if developers tomorrow came up and said oh, we're going to drop prices 20% that customers are going to rush uh you know rush to buy at at this stage so 
you know, my my guess is that most most premium guys who uh, who can afford to hold, um, um, like us, you know, will will we'll just hold. We're not going to drop prices right now. So just because you have the much more gunpowder left in you, do you think that whoever has got the most well, of the gunpowder left? Look, here's so the thing. It's a gunpowder game. It's it, one is a gunpowder game, and two, it is even if you drop prices, the all of our buyers, right, are 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 you know smart sort of investors also, and you see a downtick in price, you think there's going to be another downtick coming, right? So. Um, it, it doesn't get you sales. It doesn't get you sales. Um, so you have to create, a, you know, you have to create positive aura, and you have to sort of wait for the sentiment, um, and that's and that's what sort of gets, uh, you know, gets sales. So Kesar, do you think that the same that into the commercial space also, you you think that the prices are going to correct, or the or the premium office space will be a luxury right now, or what do you, you think know, so about the commercial rentals value coming down or? Yeah. Up? So, so Jyoti, exactly to that point, uh, you know, uh, to a large extent, you know, uh, the commercial real estate, the way it is sort of stacked up, mm -hmm. it is not really a, a sort of a premium or a, a non-premium sort of way. The more it is stacked up into what kind of an audience does the office, uh, does the building uh, cater to. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, in Mumbai, BKC is largely meant for BSI. <laughs> media and so on mm -hmm. and that's by definition are, are companies which has a stronger balance sheet and so on and hence they are able to sort of pay up a top dollar rent and, and, and so on compared to probably a low per rail market or or, or another under Goregao and so on and so forth. Uh, so our, our sense is that they will definitely you know and, and you know in, no price increase is also sort of devaluation one way so definitely to that point I don't expect that there will be price escalations there will be a lot of discussions in terms of escalations, which is already agreed upon contractually as well. Uh, but, uh, you, you know, from what I hear from most of the occupiers and our friends in the, in the, in the IPC world, uh, we, don't, we don't foresee a significant amount of price increase as happening. And that's largely because of the fact that uh, the leasing volume in itself may not, may not be very significant. I think a lot of developers and landlords will be more inward focused to make sure that the occupiers stay back with them to ensure that there is no negative absorption. Because the last thing you really want at this stage in time that leasing volume is not happening and your, 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 your people are leaving. The building. So, and, and, and to, to a large extent, a lot of developers will, in, to our sense, will go back and be, be open to negotiation, restructure rents, there'll be, there'll be more rent freeze, may not really bring down the headline numbers, but there will be more rent free conversations that way. Okay, Kazar I suppose you must have heard the face force measure much more in your lifetime than I suppose you have ever heard in this last 15 to 20 I... days. <laughs> so what's the new definition of force measure right now in your into your working style right now? Yeah, so, so I think that's a relevant question, Jyoti. Largely uh, from a perspective that this is exactly the same clause which everybody, hmm. each one of us who's there in this group, perhaps would have accepted it to be a standard clause. Standard clause, a, that's what, yeah. At, at about eight weeks back, right? Correct. I, just after eight weeks back, most of us <laughs> first rolled on to the last page of the document just before <laughs> arbitration. Just before <laughs> arbitration, there's this post major clause just to understand what is really... The what is this all about? about. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. It, it has gained <laughs> you know, unparalleled prominence. Unparalleled Correct. prominence. Right? <laughs> and, 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 and such is the case with us. Uh, so, so, quite so, honestly, so what's we, your new take on this clause? No, so I, I, I think the way we, we, the, we are dealing with this situation is that uh, this is not, this is not post major because uh, post major, uh, you know, in, in, in more, more likely terms, really means, <laughs> means that it, the, the premises is becomes rendered unusable by certain defect in the premises. Uh, across, across all our portfolio, we have ensured that each and every building continues to be operational and largely because of the fact that we have a plethora of clients, right? Right from an essential services provider to a banking guy to, 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 to possibly a pharma guy and everybody. So we've never been selective in terms of making sure that the, if the buildings are operational or not operational. So all our buildings are operational. Uh, you know, there is, there is a government, there is a government dictate of, you know, of lockdown and so on. But that does not limit for somebody not uh, rendering that premises not being usable or, or being defective. And to that point, occupation is not largely manned occupation. Uh, occupation also means 
how you are using the premises in in sort of working from home your servers your data centers your id infrastructure everything just 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 being there so that's and and i think i think that also dubs still into into a large part of uh, of the point of view which all other prominent developers also have uh, uh, you know fortunately for us, for us most of our occupiers appreciate this and understand this point and largely uh, from a standpoint that when you are having a 10 to 15 year relationship with these occupiers uh you know this one month and a month and a half doesn't really move the needle in a big way but my sense is uh, to that exactly echoing the same thought uh, if this had to go which it is expected to go in may and june and so like probably the color of the conversation will dramatically change because people can absorb uh, a one month of inaccessibility at best two months of you know access inaccessibility but if it had to go in for third and a fourth month then perhaps a, a solution will have to be worked out Uh, uh, ask a question. I'll face by yes. I just wanted to ask you a question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what percentage of your tenants have paid the April uh, uh, April rent? Would you say about about eighty seven percent? About eighty seven percent. That's uh, a huge percentage, Parvesh. Huge, huge. That's, That's a huge. So what is so? I, so I'll also tell you what. You know, yeah. Frankly speaking, if you would have had this conversation with me at the start of the month, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, my view on this would have been slightly entirely different. You know, because because you know and and we use this word quite often unprecedented times other than the unprecedented is also a very evolving time uh, <laughs> and what we at least see that over and over a lot of times you know there is a bunch of people who who is genuinely going through a liquidity crunch and who is genuinely unable to make ends meet but there is also a huge bunch of people who is trying to take an opportunity uh, and work out an opportunity of let, let's see let's put a force majeure and see what the landlord has to say right Uh, and i have had multiple situations of people putting up a, a post major request without any validity in the in the request and all they needed was to be called back spoken clarified the stand and, and largely from from you know imagine larger organizations without taking names imagine larger organizations you know are you saying that for one month people who are occupying 200000 square feet or 300000 square feet one month of inaccessibility in the business have rendered their cash flow so impaired that they are unable to pay the rent highly unlikely highly unlikely right so so what is really so what is you know dramatically has, has happened from the start of the month to now that people paid up needless to mention yes, we have seen fair bit of deference so uh, and we are quite mindful of the fact that you know if people are going through a, a cyclical liquidity issue and that, that if that needs to be pushed up by 10 15 days we are happy to work with the occupier to ensure that we cross the line and then that's been not been a question asked Uh, traditionally, this 87% should ideally have been an 87% on the 16th or the 17th of the month, right? But we are on the 22nd and the 23rd, and hence we are at this number. And as as we speak, people have come and asked for uh, from you know we've seen the request move from waiver from waivers to deferrals now. Right? Okay. So, so just to I... give, sort of add another ah. perspective to uh, you know to that. Um, mm-hmm. First of all, guys, congratulations! You guys are 87%. Just you know, just Correct. go to show uh, what quality of tenant does to your uh, you know to your, your portfolio sir uh, you know for for grade b grade c buildings where the quality of tenants is more smes um, their collection is 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 totally totally skewed uh, mm-hmm. and i was talking to our landlord in uh, in gurgaon who is an, another very large company they they have received more than 80% from their commercial tenants but their retail and fnb tenants mm-hmm. is less than 10% so Uh, you know, retail and F and B is is just another animal where uh, there are just unprecedented sort of hardships there, and um, and the land and the same landlord who will sort of you know force uh, an office tenant to pay up is you know is sort of uh, taking a much different approach with a retail uh, or a F and B tenant. Uh, and Kalpesh, you are absolutely right. Just to add to that point, and I, I, you know, I, I, I'm certain I missed out on that. And that's exactly what we have done as well. Uh, so all the retail, uh, which is there in our office buildings, which is really part of the ancillary retail, so to say, uh, we have been extremely, extremely empathetic in that situation. We have really not gone asking for money from those guys. Uh, you know, because we are quite mindful that most of these retailers, be it, uh, be it a coffee bean guy or a, or a, or a, or a food court guy. the works on a two month of maximum two months to working capital right? and and such cases we have not even gone and asked for such capital right? and and you know because retail as you rightly mentioned is a very different animal and we want to deal with it in a very separate way uh, so 
uh, you know, just just the way we have a very definitive view that force majeure does not apply and people should pay up on office occupiers' perspective, we are yet to firm up a view on the retail side. Uh, as we continue to own a large part of the retail portfolio in the country, uh, and that's that's really the view which we are still debating and evolving with. That's a good view, I suppose. Uh, Kalpesh, why, what is your view on this co-living space right now? I will just bring with that co-living. And also, I would like to take your, uh, I also like, like you to point out that the rental income of the residential is approximately around 2% in India. So how, what, what is the co-living, the return, the yield percentage is, and what is your going forward take on the co-living uh, um, aspect of that? Life? Sure. So, um, you know, the, some of the, some of the discussions that were coming up mm -hmm. were around the world, uh, that uh, is going to be a, a big negative and a big no-no um, mm -hmm. in, in this sort of COVID uh, world. We have a very, very different uh, uh, take on it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just to step back, you know, what is it that co-living provides, uh, you know, to to our customers? Most of our customers are, you know, young, single, you know, men, uh, mostly men, some women, who make between fifty thousand rupees to a lakh a month in rent. Um, you know, these uh, in, in in salary. Now, these people can only afford about 200 to 250 square feet mm -hmm. of, of space. They can only afford to pay between 10 and 20,000 a month um, for, for, you know, for, for, uh, for an apartment, for you know, breakfast, Wi-Fi, all of that. Uh, well, now, nothing is available, right? India hasn't built 250 square feet units. When it's these individuals, what they end up having to do is either... Uh, you know, with the family in a traditional PG uh, where they pay X amount or they get together with, you know, four friends and, and you know, you know, take a three bedroom with other friends, you know, four or five people sharing a, a two bedroom. Um, so co-living, first and foremost, is making things economical. Um, um, and, and, the, and, and it's hard to replace the economic value of, of, of co-living, right? There is no other option. Uh, for for for, uh, for our customers, uh, they have to sort of do one of these three things: stay with stay in a PG, you know, rent an apartment on their own, or stay in a co-living. There's lots of issues with the first two models, um, um, which which I think we all know of. But I'll just touch upon here: getting five people together or six people together and renting an apartment is not the easiest. You know, finding the people. Finding a landlord who will rent to six, five or six bachelors, you know, then furnishing it and dealing with housekeeping and you know food and all of that is, is a huge hassle. So what Co Living provides is, you know, come stay with us. It's flexible. There is very low deposit. It's month to month, um, and uh, we give you extremely, you know, well located, well done up, fully furnished places with you know full housekeeping and breakfast and 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 lunch dinner, all of that. Um, so there's a huge value add that Co Living was providing. And, and I don't think that goes away. So uh, the, the only way co-living takes a hit is if the overall economy takes a hit. If there's big job losses, right, um, then co-living takes a hit just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. If job growth slows down, then the growth of co-living uh, you know, slows down. So it is, it is very sort of um, uh, correlated, correlated to what will happen in the general economy. Um, but I think on balance, uh, our, you know, the typical co-living or, or, or the typical TG will now prefer to move into more organized co-living versus, you know, staying, you know, staying, uh, you know, trying to get an apartment on your own or staying with, you know, with the family. Um, because that's just, you know, higher hassle. And, and hygiene is going to be a big, big, big thing, you know, whether it is, uh, you know, for what, for what office landlords will do or what co-living guys will have to provide. And you know what organized players will be able to provide in terms of hygiene, um, I, I think will make co-living you know, kind of interesting. Um, to answer your second uh, question, uh, um, the residential rents, uh, the rental yields, depending on you know, which part of, of, of the country you're in um, and which part of the city, you know, range from two to sort of three and a half, you know, four percent. They have kind of been inching up over the last, uh, you know, year or two. Co-living doesn't bump it up, you know, that much. Uh, it, it bumps it up, you know, it, it'll take a three to a 3.75. Um, 
so it bumps it up by 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 you know by a small margin um but i think what's going to happen is there's there's two things that's that, that is that are going to happen i think you know sales are gonna residential sales will slow down which will bump up rents in general and i think mortgage rates are going to come down so the spread between rents and mortgage rates that used to be you know two and a half percent minus eight and a half percent six percent that's going to come down to maybe you know three and a half minus six and a half to just about three percent and then if you take a bet that you know i'm getting something at a you know pretty low price um uh, and uh, uh, you know bet on a three percent inflation uh, i think when the spread comes to about three percent is when uh, buying, you know, buying buying makes sense but i think rents i think rents uh, rents go up uh, rents, will, rents are expected to go up in the in this would, sort of run uh, i would i would think so if if people are buying less than they you know they'd be renting more uh, i would definitely come back to you uh, for all the casual buy for all the reit and the impact of this uh, rental not coming in the impact on reit and other thing but before that i would like to take some questions from from the audiences which are coming in guys the casual buy there is a question from baljit kohli in the midst of this crisis is blackstone bullish on buying assets in hotel commercials and malls you know the answer to that question is that we we uh, as i said at the right is, at the start yes, you 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 are bullish that way you know so you know we will continue to look at assets which is uh, you know irrespective of the cyclical depression this is a cyclical depression right we will be there will be life beyond it uh, there is a real estate investment program and that's something which will continue to follow through Uh, mm-hmm. as we go along so just to summarize this you know we are not too nervous about this blip which is may come you know it may be 3 months 6 months 9 months as the case may be but yeah there will be better times at the uh, you know uh, at the end of it yeah, just to add a corollary to it kaiser uh, in what whatever is the rental yield the jiske jiske basis mein aap deal kiya karte the whatever was the rental deal that was a major form of your deal calculation whether that yield perception of yours will go up or go down but i i think i think it's just not unique to us i think i think largely if one if uh-huh. one look at it uh, the the value you will attach to equity uh, that is, is, where, is going much? to increase right that, the value that. of equity will increase mm-hmm. uh, you know growingly the estimates which you think that the gdp will grow at on an average everybody is speculating uh, at least pre lockdown it was about 5 5 1/2% and post lockdown mm-hmm. it is about 3 and a half to it ranges from 2 and a half to 3% uh you know, my my sense is that it is not even going to be 3 and a half to an hour it's going to be lower of you know uh, you know absolutely 2% with with lower gdp and a higher cost of equity uh, mm-hmm. needless to mention uh, risk adjusted uh, you know will, return, will be completely yeah. different yeah your risk adjusted return expectation will be dramatically different uh, and it would just valuation are going for a toss then uh, uh, clearly uh, absolutely uh, you know and, 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 and i just say that i think i think any right thinking uh, investor would start will will probably think on on the lines of the fact that there is there is uh, you know there is there is equity and and generally the availability of debt uh, for example if you look at us mm. today uh, i am not sure if there is a lender beyond 500 million dollars there is no lender irrespective of how good the borrower is right so i don't know the availability of credit as well absolutely okay right so all of these facets hmm. together and it's not again without it's without uh, without being unique to us but all of these uh, hmm. things playing together will have a reasonable impact on uh, the return expectation of the so from so from the equity perspective the kalpesh bhai for for you the question is from bandana uh, how does industry intend to handle the money outflow situation due to various scheme launched for luring the customer which has like pay 10% now 90% on position subvention offering guaranteed rental incomes virtual working spaces etc all these schemes that all the builders used to come in how do you think that those schemes or how the builder are going to uh, su- sustain those schemes right now um i think i think there are two types of schemes that were discussed one was you know subvention and, mm-hmm. and sort of you know possession link payment plans mm-hmm. um and the second was was a short return um you know, i th- i think on the first bit it it just depends on on you know how good or not is and whether you know, the budget can um you know one thing so uh we did a lot of subvention sales right the good thing mm-hmm. about those sales 
is you're not dependent on the customer to make customer payments. To pay as long management. as you're constructing, the bank, is going to, mm-hmm. the, 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 you know, the bank is going to continue making, you're making those payments. So, um, you know, with, with, with a lot of, you know, effort needed to get those payments out, even from the banks. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you were purely sort of possession, you know, heavily possession linked, and we're hoping on you know sales during this period to to tide you through. That's gonna you know that's going to be difficult. Uh, I think the assured return schemes, depending on how you structured it, uh, if you st- you know a lot of smart developers, uh, some of whom are who are our friends, uh, you know say twelve percent assured return, but they would discount it in the price upfront, right? So they didn't have a big monthly interest outflow. So those guys, I don't see, I don't see, you know, taking a big hit, but the, the developers who are assuring a 12%, you know, actual payout, uh, you know, will, will see issues, um, you know, especially if the projects are getting close to completion and you need, you know, actual tenants to, uh, to, to, to fill these up. And you know, that's, that's going to be a problem. There is a technical question, Kalpesh Bhai, for you. How does the co-living differ from a PG accommodation or for there is any, uh, Money is this too different, or or it is how? Sure. It is uh, just different? think of co-living as organized PG. Uh, okay. So typical PG would you know would be one or two of flats you know run by a family um, that you know all they're doing is providing the the house and maybe some furniture, uh, but but no services. Uh, what what co-living, which you know it, it is, we're taking much larger spaces. Uh, we're finishing them to a much higher spec, and then we're layering on a lot of services relating you know housekeeping wi-fi dth netflix amazon prime um hmm. you know, and, and our facility in gurgaon which is the largest in you know in in india uh, largest living facility in india hmm. 450 beds you know we have an on-site kitchen so you get hot breakfast you know omelets etc um we have you know lunch dinner and then you have when you have 400 people you know staying in one place you can do incredible sort of community programming um, and and uh, you know keep keep people active and busy. Now, obviously, all of that's going to go for a toss. Uh, the community bit and the communal aspects of of co living will sort of take a back seat over hygiene and and convenience and, and other such things. Just um, I forgot to add uh, uh, sort of give you one data point. Right, we mm-hmm. um, about sixty six percent of our co living tenants left. You know, before, right before okay. the lockdown, they they you mm-hmm. know they left their bags and they and they left for home. Um, but uh, we were very surprised that about seventy eight percent have actually paid their April rents. So even if they're not even if they're not staying with us, they have paid the rents, um, and that tells us that they you know that they expect to come back, that they expect to have their jobs, um, and they're not they're not saying oh we weren't there you know force major don't you know we won't pay you rents etc. Uh, so that's uh, you know that's a positive. It's a good sign. positive sign. That's a positive that's sign. A good positive sign. The Kaiser why people are asking you what about the bank lending rates? Do you think that the bankers are still lending to the commercial because of the issue that the tenant not paying the rent and other things? How the bankers are reacting to it? Yeah. So so Jyoti, uh, you, you know that answer is is well answered by you. But but let me just give you uh, correct. You know, uh, so, so, you know, so, the, so from the user perspective. Yeah, yeah, but but just from a user perspective, uh, you know, uh, we do expect a little bit of a of a interest rate compression there. Uh, but mm-hmm. g- given the the safety and the the security of traditionally an LRD sort of uh, you know lending gotcha. mm-hmm. compared to a development sort of financing, mm-hmm. uh, you, you know, I, I don't foresee it to be a big challenge, and especially given the fact uh, in the backdrop of an excess liquidity lying with the with the banks, which mm-hmm. sooner than later they will have to part with. Right, uh, they may not really part with now, but considering the fact that they will have to part with that excess liquidity in such situations, uh, I would reckon that LRD will be a, co- a compelling option for people to sort of you know re- really give on. Hmm. What is about what is your take, Kalpesh Bhai, on to the residential market? How the uh, lenders are going to behave, or how do you think are they? I mean, last one year or so, that might be a little difficult market for you. Whatever I could understand that from the residential um, perspective to raise money, yeah, I think, how yes, think going forward, it's highly uncertain times. So I, I think uh, I think for your forget forget greenfield projects for now, right? For mm. for the next twelve months, no one's going to fund uh, new greenfield projects. Um, mm. I think lenders are going to, you know, only they're going bizarre over it. Yeah, they'll they'll no they'll even even on the projects where uh, they have lent, they will pick and choose. 
look, mm-hmm. you know, banks are sitting on a lot of liquidity, and and they were sitting on a lot of, lot of liquidity even before uh, prices the, also. Yeah. But it, it wasn't getting transmitted. Mm-hmm. Um, the the money wasn't getting transmitted because it's a risk off attitude, and it's been you know been that way for a while, uh, especially when it comes to residential real estate. And I I don't think that changes. So I think the banks will focus on you know who are my healthiest clients. And let me pick the healthiest projects from you know from those port- you know from that portfolio, and and I'll 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 just lend to that. And um, uh, so I, th- I think lending is going to be challenging for uh, for some time. Uh, Kalpesh, you also had that affordable housing uh, platform also, which you sure. launched also there. What's 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 the news there? Um, so we you know we have one project in in Gurgaon that was uh, the launch was planned sometime in Q2. I think we mm-hmm. uh, so it was affordable and mid income housing uh, platform that, that's what, yeah. with uh, with HTFC. So we're actually um, when it comes to greenfield, I think affordable and and mid income you know may still do you know may still do okay um, mm-hmm. because it was doing you know just fine even before the crisis when the rest of the sort of housing sector you know wasn't doing that great. Mm-hmm. Um, but the the best thing, there's nothing you know. The, the government and the RBI haven't really been able to come up with any appropriate policy that forces banks to transmit this liquidity. So the only way, so what, even before this crisis, we realized that the best way to get financing is from the customer, right? Mm-hmm. It's through sales, not from banks. So the best thing the RBI can do right now. Is is uh, and the government is drop housing loan, uh, home loan, rate, drop home loan right. rates and increase the uh, right. the tax benefit, um, and the, you know there's a lot of discussion you know between Kredai mm-hmm. and Naredko to sort of push for mm-hmm. other um, you know other incentives you know say you know just say no stamp duty for you know for for 12 months. So if you have a couple of these things, um, you know let's say low to no stamp duty. Um, you know, six percent home loans and um, and uh, sort of a higher rate of of uh, income tax deduction. That's going that's going to be much more effective uh, uh, in sort of getting getting projects financed through sales rather than expect so banks to uh, come in. because yeah. you know it's, it's customer equity that's financing it. But definitely, Kalpesh, don't you think that this is I can I can definitely uh, buy a rented property at two percent, whereas my cost of funding is around eight percent. So arbitrage is too huge, which is which is acting as a it's a deterrent for me to go and buy a house. But that's what I'm saying, right? If you if 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 the eight percent came down to six percent, right? The, how and, and how we can yield, do that? Rental yields, rental yields will go up to three percent. So the eight percent came down to six percent, and you said, okay, I'm getting it. I'm getting it because. The, the the fact of the matter is the deals mm. that w- that are sort of you know, you know some developers won't change but uh, you know the pricing already was was super super low let's say it goes down another 10% 15% mm. uh the deals that will be available to to customers you know in the next 12 months will be sort of you know once in a decade type deals um and if you sort of layer on no stamp duty you know low uh, low interest rates uh that should be compelling that should be compelling I will come back to the price correction point. Kazer, why people are again asking about the REIT and other things since this commercial property, the which was uh, supposed to be a safe bed rental coming in. So, Sebi has also designed a product called REIT, where the consistent return has to be met to the investor at large. But due to this type of a pandemic situation which is coming and uh, which we think that the black swan events are going to be the part of our life going forward also. How do you see the f- future of REIT going forward for me, Akaza? I think, I think uh, you know, traditionally, if you want us to look at it, you know, uh, A, real estate continues to be, in my mind, uh, uh, as Kalpesh said it rightly, uh, will continue to be a huge compelling investment option. Right? You can't do away with real estate as an investment option, uh, you know, option. And especially mm-hmm. given the backdrop to what is really happening, and if I can say loosely, the paper mm-hmm. investments. In the background of what is really happening, uh, you know, real estate continues to has has historically delivered return and will continue to deliver return. Now, in such a scenario, my my, my view is that uh, all the retail investors who would still like to take a position on real estate uh, and believes in 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 the fact that there will be a V-shaped you know recovery, uh, commercial real estate is here to stay, especially given the developing nature of the country, given the fact that we are extremely well poised in the emerging markets and so on. 
Uh, REIT obviously offers a great investment option for for people to sort of stay invested in. Uh, I I would I would I would stay away from making any comments on on our REIT uh, because obviously that that can't amount <laughs> to being a official comment. But with that, you know, my my personal view on on uh, on the on the investment option that you know that's the only avenue for everybody in, in from smaller to a larger denomination to participate in a larger real estate play. Uh, and 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 this this whole pandemic situation. If it, even if he has to play out, for example, let's assume if the rentals are not coming, worst situation is not even coming for two months or three months, which is a quarter, right? If you could extrapolate this in three months over a period of five years of tenure of lease or or nine years of tenure of lease, doesn't really move the needle in a very dramatic way, right? So you know it will be unfair to say that you know the REIT valuations and all of these things may have a great beating uh, in terms of the two months or the three months of rent waivers, which few of the tenants would 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 really be uh, you know, completely checking on because fundamentally what i believe that at the end of all this there will still be a lot of occupiers taking up space they will they the economy machinery will be back and we will have a v shaped sort of recovery uh, yes i agree that the rental numbers will will probably stay constant and will take a longer time to notch up i completely agree to that but i don't see those things that you know uh, you know it, as a as an option commercial real estate will be ruled out that again coming back to you kalpesh by that uh, co living spaces that lot of developers and all there are approximately around 300 players which are into this co living space right now and uh, market is too fragmented right now and different product different varieties do you think that consolidation uh, is going forward is the key first of all mm-hmm. and secondly uh, people were thinking i was speaking as lot of private equity players there is a lot of equity and also a lot of foreign equity which has come into it people started thinking that it will start giving us a return like a commercial real estate return of 8 to 9% and we might have a uh, exit route through reit or anything for the commerce so for for this co living space also where do you think that the exit route can come up for this co living space and this consolidation view on this um you asked a few different questions let me answer uh, the one by one um you know on the 300 players actually the the real number of co-living <laughs> players is probably 2000 or 30000 and most of them are you know one one extra bedroom um hmm. in their house but uh, I, i guess i guess the question is the organized co-living players organized co-living. sure you know sure there are but there are also you know 30000 developers uh hmm. you know most of these guys are sort of uh, one and two project um uh players uh consolidation in the traditional sense i don't foresee happening i don't foresee us taking over you know smaller players we may take over their properties but we won't we won't take over those you know those those going concerns necessarily mm-hmm. um and if you see the um uh, the demand supply imbalance uh it's it's it you know it's massive and uh the organized co living players are not even sort of scratching 1 or 2% of the overall overall demand and amongst the uh, you know i don't know if the number is 300 mm-hmm. or 200 but uh, uh, the top you know two or three or four are 90% of the market um, mm-hmm. um so uh, you know the fragmented nature doesn't really uh, you know doesn't really bother us mm-hmm. uh, the second question was on on exits and and um, and expected returns Mm-hmm. um look there are th- there will be two phases uh of 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 how co living will mm-hmm. evolve in this in this country uh at mm-hmm. least that's how we look at it mm-hmm. um phase 1 for us is that there is a lot of unsold real estate in you know in this country um so we're just we're not so we're not phase 1 for us we're not building we're just going to lease these things up long term and then we're going to tranche them and sublease them um uh, but and 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 that will never produce that that will never produce 7 8% returns but all the inefficiencies there are to the owners right not to not to the co-living player um phase 2 of it is the actual building uh of 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 co-living projects the reason why uh the residential units do not produce high returns from uh, either on a rental basis or a co-living basis is because for a co-living player the a uh, square footage per bed is the most important right and uh in a, in a 2 bhk or a 3 bhk or a 4 bhk the h and the k is is dead space for a you know for a co living player and that drags down your yield 
So when, we do, when we're, we're looking at new builds, we're looking at extremely efficient designs, you know, mm -hmm. essentially double loaded corridors, you know, studio apartments, mm -hmm. where our per bed square footage is, you know, 125 square feet, 150 square feet. Uh, most apartments today are about 250 square feet, 300 square feet per bed. Um, so once you uh, bring down the square footage um, and you target the right locations, and I think now even more so with land prices, you know, uh, which are sort of expected to come down, I think you, you can easily build uh, to a 12% yield. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and, and the, the call is that if you can build an asset class at scale at a 12% yield, uh, you should be able to exit it. Um, and globally, if you see uh, the residential REITs trade at a, um, at, at a, at a premium to commercial um, uh, REITs. And that's because investors like betting on the credit of thousands of, of retail, you know, uh, uh, lessors versus uh, large, large corporate lessors. Um, so, it, you know, if there is a demand for high quality office REITs, um, there will be a demand for high quality residential uh, co-living and student housing REITs also. Fantastic. Again, uh, coming back to the question, uh, not to the question, the propaganda that you started in your life with the JV model and the DM model, uh, Kalpesh. Sure. Uh, DM and the JV model, I suppose uh, you were one of the pioneers in India and who conceptualized this idea. How do you, don't you think that this is going to be the future ready or already the future ready idea for us? Yeah, that's, uh, you this, know, uh, DM and this, uh, this you know, at, at a, at a um, uh, we, you know, we started with, uh, with DM and JV, uh, and, and anybody, anybody who starts with DM and JV are people who don't have enough equity of their own. Um, uh, and <laughs> so you, right you already now, had that also. <laughs> no, but right now everyone's in that same boat, right? There isn't enough capital Correct. Uh, available today mm. to, uh, you know, to buy out land. Um, and your know, life has to sort of go on and landowners will need to monetize their, their lands. And so DM and JVs are, 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 are going to be, uh, uh, very, very prevalent. Correct. So yeah. that is going to be there in suppose. So, so Kaiser Bhai, there is again a question for you that there are new types of tenants which are coming as lot of data center requirement is coming in. There is a, there is a lot set of new set of tenant which is coming up in the market there because uh, what is your take on the data center for, for this commercial space? No, so I, I, yeah, so, so, so I, I think uh, clearly, uh, and we have a, a, a mm. bunch of such occupiers mm. uh, who are expanding their footprint uh, into data centers and so on. Uh, largely, mm. you know, they, we, we did not really feel the need for data centers or having some, you know, a, a dedicated service offering like this uh, until a few years back. But now with, with, you know, so much of technology and so much of bandwidth available to all of us, uh, that's a, that's a reality, which we, which we have seen, uh, you know, uh, uh, but again, uh, it will be my, my view is that it's, it's going to be a little bit of a while before, before, uh, you know, uh, most of these will start seeing the light of the day, especially, uh, especially in this whole post COVID world, a lot of countries and all of these larger organizations who were looking to shift a bit of work and their data into into the country and so on mm. will go through a process of you know what we call it as a protectionism you know for some time they will sort of stay on just where it is uh, i don't foresee the data center for the next at least three to four years will continue to be a flavor i may have a contrary opinion but that's that's my view unlike of course warehousing and all the other, other allied activities will have a huge uptake uh, needless to mention e-commerce continues to be a big beneficiary uh, of, of, of the whole situation as it pans out. Uh, so while, while I continue to be extremely bullish on warehousing, I'm not too sure how the data center piece is going to play out. Hmm. Uh, again, for you, Kalpesh, there is a lot of uh, question which has been asked on the use of technology into the, into the entire process of real estate industry, which is uh, where the digitization is not there in terms of for everything, whatever that you go from starting question to the last one, if you see there is a approximately around 50% of the question is hovering around the technology to be used in this entire real estate arena from the construction to the registration process to also the land uh, land records everything uh, 
and uh, I, I, I've interacted with you in the past and I know that your passion towards that technology and to revolutionize that. What's your take here and uh, what from here for that technology stack point? Um, yeah, so look, when it, when, it comes to, uh, when it comes to technology, real estate is living in the dark ages, right? Um, the, absolutely. Uh, it, none of our processes, you know, hmm. starting from, you know, how we capture co consumer data, how we treat that, how we manage the sales you know, cycle, to most importantly, how we run our construction, um, hmm. uh, you know, both from an IT tech standpoint as well as physical construction technology standpoint. Um, you should, you know, wherever you sort of touch, you know, any, anything you touch can can be dramatically sort of improved by technology. Um, for a variety of reasons, developers have, have, have always been slow to, to, uh, to adapt to technology. Unfortunately, I think this period, and as well as the period immediately preceding uh, th this period, you know, when, when people are fighting for, um, when, when, the, when they're having an existential crisis, they're, they're not in a mood to innovate and, and, and dramatically change, you know, change things and change processes. So I think this is going to be bad news for technology adoption, um, you know, in, in the short term. But, uh, but those players who, who will, and there, and there won't be too many of us, uh, those who will, will benefit from it. But, uh, you know, it, it's hard to, uh, because it's, it's such an intricate ecosystem, um, you can't start using a technology when the rest of the ecosystem is not using it. Uh, whether it is, you know, software technology or construction technology, right? I may want to do precast and steel, but unless the vendor ecosystem, unless the contractor ecosystem um, is also sort of, you know, enough of them are, are, are also doing it, there's no point just one guy doing it. Similarly, I'd like to you know manage my construction process and and you you know use you know, some some pretty nice new software, uh, uh, you know SaaS software packages that are available. But if my vendors can't really log on to it and 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 you know interact with it, then then it's a, then it's a bit difficult. So um, I I think it's it's needed. It's coming. Um, it's you know, but it's going to take longer than than uh, than most people think uh, it it should take. Yajabai, what's your take on the technology uh, versus real estate industry? So, Jyoti, uh, at least on the on the commercial real estate side, uh, you know, uh, and uh, the major intervention of technology is more on the property management uh, perspective. Right? Uh, Correct. Largely because most of these sophisticated occupiers, mm -hmm. uh, and especially in the in the the context of, of COVID, uh, mm -hmm. their expectations are completely different. Uh, you know, uh, just to give you a sense, uh, a lot of people will just not come back to office uh, mm -hmm. of, on the basis of how prepared we are. In fact, mm -hmm. a lot of people will start evaluating buildings right, uh, for Correct. new leasing discussions of how safe and secure so there's going to be hyper focus on safety precautions and so on and when we speak for all this and i think i think technology plays a very very important role uh, especially from a property management perspective uh, you know just when the way somebody is coming in like like for the simplest thing when we talk about say visitor management how hmm. contactless can you can you do it for example and i'll, I'll just give you I'll and give how you se seamless also can you do that how seamless like i'll just right. give you a real time example for example, the way when one is looking at it, all along we were used to standing in a queue, uh, mm -hmm. right in the in the reception or the lobby of a building to enter our details mm -hmm. and and move on. Then came a time when we we had to put our details onto a tab and then we could move on. Now we are really talking about a really a time when when you know there will be a QR code on your phone and you can move on. But in the post COVID world, right? That QR code also doesn't really apply because you are looking at a contactless system. You need to do a thermal scanning and so on. Uh, and you know, uh, the, and, and you know, I, I you know, and, and this is more like a trivia. Uh, we are considering, you know, uh, you know, uh, a glasses, you know, a sort of a glasses which is there on all, uh, you know, which every security can wear it, which is wearable, wearable tech glasses, where we, it just doesn't help you in terms of your visitor entry, but also scans you. So you don't need another extra intervention yeah. to scan somebody so on the glasses exactly. you have the scanner mm -hmm. uh, where you will be able to scan somebody for temperature and for anything else and wow. i think that's something you know uh, you know which we are doing at a, at a sort of a portfolio level uh, but coming back to your point i think the way technology is adopted like mm -hmm. you know in most cases a lot of occupiers even you know the building uh, you know the building tenants are talking are seeking a connected world how they mm -hmm. can communicate with other occupiers in, in, in the building how lifts are connected from one another 
how uh, and we are working on our several such initiatives to make sure that each building becomes hmm. a community as a whole and it's wow. it's about time that each and every building is looked as a community because when you have about 10 15000 people working in one building spending about 10 to 12 hours of their working day hmm. uh, it is important that they seek much more than just brick mortar and spaces it's like that becoming a bigger co co working space kaise absolutely absolutely so in in one way you know and then that's a big initiative you know a lot of us including us who are sort of running in making sure how you foster a feeling of community in each of these buildings and and you can't you can't really do that without the intervention of technology in such cases so it means you are been you are also uh, mane trying to compete with those there is of, yeah, <laughs> yeah. there is a there is a big push there is a there big, is a big push, push for that kaise uh, push, okay. uh, push and adoption uh to make sure that technology is there and digital and and let's not digitize for the sake of digitizing mm-hmm. in order to make sure the only objective of such exercises is to make sure how are you making lives convenient for people mm-hmm. and safer for people so convenience and safety are the two reasons are are really the two two buzzwords on mm-hmm. which every such initiative is going to work on i suppose we are absolutely running out of time and the questions are not getting finished uh, kalpesh bhai so just on to the last thing and just to wind it up from you uh where do you think ki, uh, the time is going to come up for the although you have already told ki 6 mahina 12 mahina you never told to apna time kab aayega sir real estate ke liye and when do you think that the price correction is going to happen or do you think some major disruption is going to happen in the real estate or do you think that things will get streamline of its own and it's just a matter of time that it will pass off your last comment on it kalpesh bhai um yeah i i think i th- i think it's sort of a minimum 12 months uh, i think it's a minimum 12 months disruption from a from a covid standpoint for for mm-hmm. you know for us to come out of it um you know save save ex- you know save and accept if there is a vaccine that comes you know comes in sooner unlikely though uh mm-hmm. so i think it's a minimum 12 month period of this high uncertainty um situation, time, yeah. and then you know probably 6 to 12 months from then to recover from it um mm-hmm. but look here's the here's the thing right no matter how bad things you know no matter how bad things are there is there is always there is always money to be made right Correct. even in even in a you know in, even in, in, a down, in a down cycle so the the biggest thing we're doing right now is so we've said okay no more greenfield projects we're going to work with banks and nbfcs and mm-hmm. take over the distressed portfolios absolutely um, correct they have you know they have trouble borrowers and and so they you know they they need a change of of they need to right. sort of change borrowers and they, they need somebody who can monetize this so hmm. um we're seeing this as a big opportunity to do distress uh right now so things will be bad for life as we know it for you know for probably a year two years but then what you do you know despite the the hardship and then how you innovate your business model to to survive and thrive is is what's going to you know make a difference uh in how you come out of it at the other end uh absolutely so for say from you the final takeaway is that so how we can innovate our business model we need to have little bit of gunpowder with us we need to be little bit patient for another 12 months of time and just so and, this- and instead of you know instead of 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 pessimist thinking uh mm-hmm. you know just think just think of this is going to be a time of massive disruption you know a lot of people will go out of business a lot of businesses will go out of business right a lot right. of things will change how are you going to benefit from it how are you going to be positioned correctly you know think of you know just be thinking about that uh, and it won't come to you at first right it won't come to you but when you get up the third day fourth day fifth day maybe a month from now it'll come to mm-hmm. you uh, but uh, this is now more than you know more than ever a time to just think out of the box um and and think think about how the world you know will look like uh whenever we get out of it however long it is um and uh, uh if nothing else it will help you uh, maintain your sanity absolutely correct kaiser bhai your last take on this uh, about what do you think uh, going forward times which is there for you you know we're very true to what kalpesh said you know uh, you know as as we as as we say dislocation always provides an opportunity Uh, and these are these are times when this is uh, there are clear dislocations in the market mm. people will be out of businesses and businesses will be out of businesses as kalpesh said uh, mm. you know newer business models will come out uh, you know there will be new set of expectations 
uh, there will be new crop of players also. But but the idea is that we can continue ruminating about what's going wrong versus versus keep planning. And I really I really like what what uh, you know Kalpesh said right at the start of it scenario planning. And I think that's Correct. really most important, most important at this point of time. To, to, you know, to, to, to sort of keep planning in terms of and be available with all possible options. You know, you should always have a you should have plan B, plan C, plan D. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think, so I think scenario planning is the most important, important thing, thing which, which, a, which all companies need to embrace in today's day and age. So what, so what I could gather from both the speaker is two, three things which is coming out very, very prominently for all of us. One is that we need to innovate. Another is that another 12 months of time that we need to give it for uh, this thing to done. Third thing, which is again coming out very strongly from all the speakers is this key. We need to be absolutely prepared for the contingency plan is not plan A and plan B. We need to be planning up to plan E. Uh, although we would ask the, both the speakers to come out that all the planning cost money because I come from a finance background that plan C, plan D, plan E, all these planning cost money. But okay, so we need to adjust to all this planning and contingency plan. And fourthly, whatever that the, both the speakers has pointed out that we need to be adoptable at all point of time. We need to be aware of what is happening around us. We need to be adoptable. We need to try and see. And the change within ourselves is also very important as it, as Kalpesh Bhai and the Kaiser has already told that in terms of what they are also thinking as a company, as Kaiser has told that for their entire company, they are trying to see that how the entire building of people, whichever they are working, how can they convert that into a community? So this is the type of, this is, this is the time that which is given to us that we should go out, we should try and do some introspection, we should try and see what else we can do apart from things which is happening. Both the speakers, sir, uh, Kalpesh Bhai, Kazar, I have the personal privilege of working with you. You were phenomenal today, sir. Absolutely. Mane, uh, in terms of it is beyond the expectations and look at the type of the comments that we are getting from everybody. I suppose, sir, we all enjoyed it and I don't have words to thank you because of the tremendous amount of knowledge also and it is not the theoretical part that you are bringing on the table it is all absolutely demonstrable in each and every word that you have spoken excellent sir uh, i thank you so 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 much on behalf of resurgent india i thank all the participants i thank trivika i thank blackstone i thank nucleus kaiser everybody thank you Thank you so much once again for coming and, and organizing. Thank, thank you, Jyoti. It was thank a pleasure. You, thank you, pleasure. Pleasure. Bye. Absolutely, it was, absolutely it was pleasure. Always. Take care. Thanks bye a bye. lot. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. All bye. the best. Thank you, Kazar. Thanks. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.